Hi, everyone. Welcome along to the Footy Accumulators betting show with me, Will Perry, and my two right-hand men, former Aston Villa and Bayern Munich striker Alan McAnally and our betting expert, James Vickers. We've missed it, haven't we? Big time. A crazy three months has flown by and the Premier League is back. Alan, there was talk that it might not happen, but how good that we're going to get the seasons finished. Yeah, brilliant. That's the, well, it's the main thing, Will, isn't it? After all, we, we wanted... Well, the majority, I think, of people are dying to get the season finishes, which is all we're going to have the opportunity. We've had a little appetizer with the Bundesliga, and now we've got what we want, our Premier League back. Protocol seems to have gone pretty good. There's been a couple of positive tests, but on the main, looks as though we're going to get football started on Wednesday. Yeah, and James, of course, we've got to mention the Championship because we're going to be focusing on them, aren't we, on the show as well. Uh, you're a big Preston fan in the playoffs. We'll talk about... That in a bit more depth later on, but it would have been heartbreaking, particularly for, for Leeds and West Brom, if the season was to have been written off. Yeah, definitely. Best two teams by a long shot in that division. Um, it's been nice not having my Saturdays ruined by Preston, so I'm <laughs> sure that'll, uh, that'll come back as well. But yeah, just delighted to have uh, English football back as well, because I was getting a bit burnt out with the Bundesliga. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And we weren't doing too well on our uh, Ackers and our Nap Challenge, which we'll get to later as well. Uh, right, guys, firstly, I want to uh, kick off by getting your Premier League top fours come the end of the season. So, I mean, look, we, we can safely say that Liverpool are going to be number one in both of those, aren't we? It's a 25-point lead over Manchester City. So, in terms of who's going to be second, third and fourth, Alan, we'll start with you. Um, I've got some odds mm. in front of me from, from Skybet as well. Just a reminder of that. Top four, how it looks currently. Liverpool, 82 points. City in second. Uh, Leicester third, uh, 53. Chelsea in fourth, 48 points. Three points ahead of fifth place. Manchester United. But I mean, look, you could go down to Wolves, Sheffield United, even Tottenham still in the mix for the top four. What do you think, Alan? Yeah, I, I think, obviously, we'll just, let's just stick with the top two. And it's all between, can Leicester, will this break go against Leicester? I'm not sure. Chelsea? Um, they don't have the players that they want in their team yet, but they're going to be coming And Manchester United. I thought Man United were in a good place, actually, just before the, uh, the lockdown. Uh, and I'm going to go for Man U to jump over Chelsea. I think Leicester will have enough with the games to go that they'll probably stay third, actually, because that's quite a buffer at the moment with the five points. That's quite good. Um, so I'm just going to go Liverpool, Man City. I'm going to say Leicester continue the good work under Brendan Rodgers. But I'm going to see Man United get above Chelsea into fourth um, if their form uh, can be taken from before the lockdown. And, of course, everybody back fit, including, of course, the wonderful Marcus Rashford. Uh, Marcus Rashford. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's second favourite in the list I've got in front of me, Al. Seven Is to it? two, yeah. that would be. Seven to two for a top four finish. At Liverpool, Manchester City, Liverpool. Sorry, Liverpool, like Manchester City, Leicester and, and Manchester yeah. United. I can uh, see James? That. By the way, you're right about the Wolves thing as well. Sorry, just to interrupt, Will. Mm. You're right the Wolves thing, but... I don't know. I, they've still got brilliant players there and Sheffield United have done well, but I think both of them will suffer of the break rather than the momentum they had uh, before the break, uh, the lockdown. Yeah. All right, James, what, what do you reckon? You think Chelsea are going to be in there or are you going with Allen and Manchester United? Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to go with Allen. I think Leicester, the key for Leicester really just looking through their fixtures, they still need to play both Chelsea and Manchester United at home. Ooh. So really big games for them. And then they've got games away at Arsenal and Tottenham thrown in there as well. So I think Leicester having that point buffer on the board at the moment will sort of play into it. You know, anyone's game at the moment, them two games against Chelsea and United are going to be absolutely huge. But I think at the moment, sort of as we're seeing it, you know, formal will change throughout the rest of the season. I'm going to go with Al on this. Uh, yeah, Leicester third. I think United will come in fourth. I think Chelsea really will need to step it up. You know, they've got the likes of Ziyech coming in, potentially Timo Werner, and we talked about Kai Havertz last week as well. So they'll be desperate to get Champions League football and. Mm -hmm. With the, the the midfield options that United have now, I can see them just pipping Chelsea, unfortunately, for Chelsea fans. Yeah, and look, we should remind everyone how, how big an achievement this would be for Leicester. I know they've been right up there throughout the whole of the season, but to, to get Champions League football uh, oh. at the King Power, and I know they've had the unthinkable already in, in winning the Premier League and in that Champions League season, mm. but to get it again so soon after is really impressive, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I like Brendan Rodgers. He did a brilliant job uh, at Celtic as well, and Took a bit of stick actually when he left, but I think he knew the potential at Leicester City to, and to be a manager in the Premier League as well is something that he wants to do, as well as uh, you know a, a financial position that the club's in that's uh, pretty fantastic. With also the players that they can now go and shop to try and get to try and make the you know the squad stronger. And in Jamie Vardy, they have been 
Um, lucky to the point that he's come from those non-league right through, but he, he can score goals and his pace has caused people loads of problems. So they're a good team, Leicester. That's why I'm, I'm loath to think that you know, Chelsea or Man U could actually catch him with that five-point buffer. And I'm glad um, James talked about the fixtures. I haven't actually looked properly at the fixtures. And those games are going to be huge. But I think they'll get players on the team that can cope with those big games and make sure they, they get a Champions League place, which would be absolutely unbelievable for Leicester City. It'd be incredible. James, you touched on it and mentioned some of the names that are coming into Chelsea's ear. Of course, a deal already done, Timo Werner. And, and we've talked in the past on, on the show we've been doing, focusing on the Bundesliga, players like Kai Havertz and other world stars that other big teams are going to be after. And it's crucial, isn't it, that Chelsea get in that top four spot if they're going to attract those big names continuously over the summer. Definitely, yeah. And you mentioned Havertz there. We talked about him last week and, and a couple of weeks ago as well. I think for him, decision of where he goes in the summer will be dictated by Champions League football. So I think mm. Chelsea and United, the two Premier League teams that have been heavily linked with him, it's, it's imperative for them to get Champions League football. I think whichever team of them two gets Champions League football could potentially sway Havertz's decision to mm. who he goes to. Uh, you know, two massive teams that you know rely on Champions League football. I just think with the the options that Solskjaer now has in the offensive areas and in midfield, they might have a little bit too much. But you know, Chelsea are there on merit so far this season, and I wouldn't be surprised if Lampard keeps them there come the end of the season. Yeah. OK, right. That's our top four is done. Uh, and then in terms of relegation, a reminder of how that bottom three in the Premier League looks. So it's really tight, isn't it? 18th place. So the bottom three, Bournemouth, 27 points. Aston Villa in 19th on 25 points. And Norwich, still not out of it, 21 points uh, in uh, 20th place. Rock bottom. Norwich have played 29. Villa have played 28. Bournemouth have played... 29. Before we get on to that, Al, I just want to tap mm. into your knowledge, really, of playing at Villa Park, because yep. that crowd is, uh, look, they're, they're, they're fantastic, aren't they, when they're behind the team, but they, they can get tetchy, they can get on the players' backs. It's something that uh, Villa pay, players past and present have, have talked about. Mm. Is that something that, that you remember from your time there? Yeah, yeah um, I kind of, I suppose. You know, no fans like to watch, watch your team when you get beat, especially at home when you think you have that kind of advantage. And of course, we have to remember, there will be no fans. So the players are going to have to deal with this psychologically. And we've already seen at the moment, if we take the Bundesliga just as that's what we have at the moment, um, the away wins column has been extraordinary. I mean, quite incredible. Um and that home advantage is not there, which you would have thought with Aston Villa, certainly with a huge stadium and a big crowd to get, would have been good. But So that might work to the advantage if the game's not maybe going just the way that everybody would want, that there might not be the, the, the moans and groans from your, your, your home supporters. For the same instance, if you're an away team, um, it might be good that if the home team is winning, there isn't that surge of power you get for, in the last 20 minutes. So... It's going to be really interesting. I mean, obviously, I'm hoping Villa survive, and I'm just having a look at the table right now. Can you give Norwich a chance then? Because I'm saying there might be some weird results coming up. You know, can Norwich go mm. three away games and win that they're not expected to win? So there's going to be a few imponderables to take into here. I just think, you know, Norwich are a long way back, um, and Villa, Bournemouth, Watford, West Ham, Bright I'd bring Brighton into the mix as well for sure, because they are, of course, only two points ahead, and maybe yeah. Southampton. Um, are not safe either. It is a real difficult one to call, genuinely. I think this will be the hardest one to call. James, what's fascinating, isn't it, is like when you've been written off, like Norwich, you've got nothing to lose, have you? And, and we know how they, they spent and how they, you know, they were very uh, cute and clever in the market and, and it wouldn't cost them too much to go down. They probably expected to go down. But when you look mm. at who Norwich have got to play, Norwich still have to play Southampton, Brighton, sure. Watford and West Ham. They have got a fighting chance. Really? Definitely, yeah. And we sort of to compare it to what we've seen so far in the Bundesliga, we on the first show we did, we talked about how, you know, poor Werder Bremen had been in the Bundesliga and mm. since then they look a completely different team. They've really transformed themselves and they've given them yeah. some fighting chance now of getting out of relegation. So there's no reason why Norwich, you know, potentially can <clears throat> get away with uh, escaping relegation. I think as you mentioned, Will, those those games against teams in and around them are going to be absolutely crucial. And I think, you know, looking at the table at the moment, if I was to to go for three teams that will potentially go down, you know, I think Norwich <clears> probably <throat> have left themselves a little bit too much to do. It would take, you know, a, a massive turnaround for them to survive at the moment. But, you know, it can be done. I think Villa, what they've got going for them is they've got that game in hand. If they win that game in hand, you know, they jump out of the relegation zone and that keeps mm. the pressure on, on the likes of Bournemouth and West Ham. 
I fear for Bournemouth. I think, you know, the way they play at home, the crowd are quite tight into the pitch and, you know, they are a decent team at home. So I think potentially, as we've mentioned, with the away results, that could go against them. But, yeah, uh, if I was to pick three that would go down, I think Norwich, Villa and Bournemouth would be my three. So it's two to one on Sky mm. Pet. Mm. Easiest three to go for, but I think there's going to be plenty of twists and turns before the end. J- James, what price is Norwich, Bournemouth, and Brighton. <clears throat> it's twelve to one on Skybet. Ooh, because obviously I'm obviously saying then Villa are going to just have enough to survive. But I, I, I'm agreeing mm-hmm. wholly with you. I think Bournemouth season. I think with the injuries they've had and not scoring any goals, that's a big problem for me. Although it's hard to have a go at Eddie because he has done such a fantastic job. And what is it? Is it thirteen thousand to get? Twelve thousand? Fourteen thousand? So just being in the Premier League and competing at this level is incredible. But I'm going to go Norwich, Bournemouth. And what I've seen from Brighton so far, I'm not being overly, overly impressed. Uh, and I'm thinking then that Villa, Watford, West Ham and Southampton just managed to survive. Yeah, nice price that actually, isn't it, James? As you say, 12-1 yeah. to 1 on, on Sky Bet, and, and you're going with uh, the current three, essentially, aren't you, James? Villa, Bournemouth, Norwich, which, as you say, 2-1 to one, uh, on Sky Bet. Right, let's move on to, to the championship, shall we? Because I know you've got a vested interest, James, in, in being a Preston fan, a long-suffering Preston fan, as we keep mentioning. Maybe not <laughs> long-suffering for, for too much longer, because uh, a reminder of how the top six in the champ looks, Leeds and, and West Brom in the automatic spots, but then Fulham, Brentford... Nottingham Forest and Preston making up the playoff places. And, and actually, we talked about this before we came on, didn't we? You probably have to go, James, all the way down to QPR in 13th uh, on 50 points. So six points mm. off you lot, Preston, still in the picture. I mean, that, that's, uh, you know, with, with, with a fair amount of games to go, still feasible, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. We sort of looking at the championship over the last few years, it has been really tight in that, that playoff race. The top sort of one or two have usually decided themselves there's usually one or two teams that are just, you know, a little bit better than everyone else in the league. And mm. you know, this year it seems to be West Brom and Leeds. I think them mm. two will be the automatic two that go up. But yeah, the playoffs is anyone's guess. Uh, been a Preston fan. I hope we stay in the playoffs. We've got our first game backs away at Luton, who was second bottom. So you fancy us to go there and, and get three points if we do have serious aspirations about getting into the playoff. But over the last few years, there's been a team that, you know, come out of nowhere towards the end of the season and really put a run together. And, you know, looking at the table and the form guide this year, Millwall have done that. I said on a, a different show at the start of the season that Millwall would be one of the teams that, you know, would potentially could slip into a relegation fight this year. Just with, you know, the level that the squad's at at the moment, I didn't think they'd invested as well as they could have done uh, compared to where they'd been over the last few years. But credit to them, they've climbed up the table and, I think if I was looking for an outsider to go for the playoffs to potentially sneak in, I know it sounds daft to say that when they're only two points behind. <clears throat> Given how far back they were at Christmas, I think Millwall definitely are in for a real mm. shot of getting in. Mm. I mean, Alan, it's such a, you, you cover a lot of it as well, don't you, over the season, yeah. the championship, and it, it is such a tight league. Uh, mm. but, but essentially, as we're saying, with home form out the window, um, and you know, no crowds there, et cetera, and, and yeah. who knows what we're going to get in terms of form after the restart, it really makes it interesting, doesn't it? Well, I'm glad you said that, Will, because it teased me up for what I'm going to say. Mm. Is there any form in the championship when you get to the last eight games? That it's, it, it's, it, if you think you're like, yeah, they'll definitely win. Nope. It's just like, it's one of those leagues. It's impossible to, to, to judge sometimes. It really is. And of course, <clears throat> with the situation we're in, it's going to be even more difficult. I'm going to throw Blackburn into the, the mix. They've been, I, I saw Blackburn a few times and they were, um, they were relatively impressive and they're going to get the likes of Bradley Dak back, etc. with a bit of luck, although I'm not sure how long <coughs> I spoke to him <coughs> Excuse me, in the break. And he was hoping to be back. He'll be a big player for them, etc., etc. There's no question Leeds and West Brom have been the best, but out with that. And I suppose Brentford have had a lot of plaudits. They have some wonderful players in their, their team as well. But to try and pick one, wow. I mean, I try and stay away from the championship as much as I can because it is properly unpredictable. As mm. uh, as we know, as we all know, yeah, twenty five to one promotion for Blackburn. Ooh, see, they're, cause they're, <clears throat> so Preston on fifty six, which is obviously James's team. Blackburn on fifty three. I mean, I mean, Derby in fifty one. Do we give Derby a chance, James? Fifty yeah. to one, fifty yeah. to one, Derby County. Yeah, I'd give them a chance, definitely. Fifties, that much? Yeah, gee, was that's one. unbelievable, actually. 
So let, let's just uh, let's just go through and, and pick three teams. Then I, I think you're going to say Preston, aren't you? In the playoffs, James, you've got to say that. Well, I mean, like, are we going? Are we going as Leeds and, and West Brom top two? Bearing in mind that yeah. uh, West Brom have got that, that six point advantage on on Fulham. Yeah, definitely. They've been the best two teams. Fulham have done okay. <clears throat> I think this. I think they'll be focused their minds. I think West Brom and what they've done. I think they'll be too strong. I think they're just both of the teams are just too strong for the championship. I think. Mm. Well, I don't know, James. Do you think? I'm just, I'm just presuming you'll think that Leeds and West Brom will go up automatically. Definitely, yeah. I think, as you mentioned there, they they are the <clears> best <throat> two teams in the league. Last year, Leeds were unlucky to miss out. They really sort mm. of collapsed towards yeah. the, end of the season. But I think Bielsa has learned his lessons from last year, and yeah, I just can't see past them two at the moment. Obviously. Yeah. We don't know how form's going to be, as you've mentioned, but they have been the most consistent teams and they've got the best two squads in the division. So there's there's no real reason to look past them. Mm. But, you, but you're right. We do get that surge, Al, don't we, in the championship. You, you often yeah. see a team uh, all right, without a three-month break in the middle of it, but in the mm. sort of last eight, nine, ten games, making a surge for the playoffs and actually having a good record in the playoffs. I remember, was it, was it Sunderland under Roy Keane went seven or eight on the bounce or something from completely and utterly nowhere, which means you need to look at Derby, Swansea, Blackburn, Cardiff, Millwall, potentially doing exactly the same. Right, I'm going to go Fulham, playoffs, Brentford, who are a good football team, definitely to be in the playoffs. I'm going to go for Blackburn to get to the playoffs. And I'm going to go with Preston in the playoffs. I've seen Preston a couple of times and um, they've got some really good players in the middle of the park that I quite like. So I'm going to go Fulham, Brentford, Preston, and Blackburn in the playoffs. James? I was quite surprised that Alan uh, picked Preston then. Uh, I thought he was going to go Blackburn and, and say someone like Forrest to go in instead. I, I'm going to go Brentford and Fulham, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think, aside from the top two, they probably are the best two teams in the league. Wouldn't like to call which order they, they are going to be in, uh, but I think they'll definitely be third and fourth. Well, they, they play each other, don't they, on Saturday, West London Derby. What a way to kick yeah. off. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think... <clears throat> What that does, that gives the teams below them a chance. I still think that they will will be the, the third and fourth teams. I'd get absolutely crucified if I didn't pick Preston. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think there's better squads beneath us um, in terms of quality, but I think what we have is that togetherness and, and everyone's sort of fighting for the same cause. So I'm going to go us to stay in there. Um, as I mentioned, Millwall, I wouldn't be surprised if they get in. Forest, even though they're fifth at the moment, they've been a bit hit and miss at times. You know, they mm. win games that you don't expect them to, and they lose <laughs> games that you really think they should be winning. So I'm going to say Forest to just miss out, and I'm going to go Preston Millwall as my fifth and sixth. Uh, again, not sure which order. I'd, just to sort of go with it as it is, I'd go Brentford third, Fulham fourth, Preston fifth, and Millwall sixth. But that is me solely with my uh, my Preston bias hat on there. It's going to be amazing actually when they get the first games on. It'll be genuinely about the players who cope better with well the cavernous sounds, the <clears throat> without the sounds, etc., etc., etc. Forget about all the testing and all that because if you're playing, you're past, you're okay, you're fit, you're ready to go. But I think this will be we will we will if we're, if we're going to do a football betting show, I'll guarantee you. We'll be like, yeah, I think we'll all agree that, you know, I don't know, Swansea would beat whomever. And then you're like, I can't believe they got beat. It's going to be, it's going to be like that till the end of the season for sure. Mm. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you, Preston. <laughs> uh, right, let's move on to our uh, match in focus. And we're going to talk about Manchester City <coughs> against Arsenal. We already mentioned your boys, uh, your old boys out. Um, Aston Villa taking on Sheffield United. They get things yep. started. And then it's the evening game, isn't it? City against Arsenal at the Etihad Stadium. Uh, interesting to see Arsenal lost 3-2 against Brentford in a friendly. Um, which, and we talked about this friendlies. I've been speaking to a lot of the, the Premier League players on, on Zoom and, and they said they've been tasty. I think ben Foster was saying tackles flying in all, all over the place in, in Watford <coughs> games. Can we read anything into those, those friendlies, Al? Uh, not really. Genuinely not really. Um, I would imagine they made a few changes as well. You know, you can make 10 changes if you want, etc., etc. The only thing is, I love to hear that there's been a few tasty challenges going in because the guys are just wound up as an elastic band, ready to go, aren't they? They, they, they mm. want to get it back on again. <clears throat> um, so, and but incidentally, if uh, us talking about the championship, if Brentford have managed to score three goals, then I'm quite happy. I'm, I'm delighted I said they would stay in the, in the playoff positions. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to say no will, but um, it'll all be down to who he picks, who can cope with the circumstances and hopefully everybody's fit and ready to go. But it's always nice to get a game under your belt, and that's the main thing. 
Yeah, and and, and I guess the, the under the microscope will be Manchester City and seeing James if they can pick up where they left off. City uh, to win at the Etihad against Arsenal three to ten. Uh, mm. Arsenal win as long as eight to one. Uh, and if we're going with uh, away wins and the trend set in the Bundesliga, that's not a bad shout, is it? Twenty two to five. <laughs> Uh, the draw, uh, and then we look at some first goal scorer odds as we always do, and we have done in the Bundesliga. Sergio Aguero, 12 to 5, anytime 4 to 7. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, 10 to 3, 10 to 11, uh, anytime. If you fancy a, a punt on the other side of things, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, uh, 11 to 2, 17 to 10, uh, anytime. But uh, I, I guess, you know, looking at, at Arsenal, um, it's kind of a, it's a bit of a free hit, isn't it? First game back, Arteta back to the Etihad. Yeah, definitely. I think. Looking at Arsenal's recent history against Man City, you know, you'd be a bit silly to go against City in this one. I think the main focus for City, really, I think it's fair to say the league's gone for them, but, you know, they will finish second. So I think with City, it's keeping that level that they have been at, you know, for the majority of the season. And then when the Champions League rolls around, having a really good crack at that, I'd expect them to beat Madrid in that second leg. Uh, already 2-1 up with two away goals. So I think that is the the main focus for them between now and the end of the season. So I'd expect high intensity from City. Everyone trying to play themselves into that, you know, starting eleven, which Guardiola likes to to chop and change, you know, with the talent that he has at his disposal. It's It's hard to see you know, uh, a settled 11, uh, so to speak. You know, they've got the likes of Leroy Sane back as well now, who just adds another dimension to their attack. So mm. I think definitely City should be picking up a win here. Obviously, we've mentioned the way win's been a, a common theme in the Bundesliga so far. But, you know, I still think with or without fans, Arsenal are a little bit weak in that spine of their team. Great going mm. forwards. They have been for years. They just, every transfer window failed to address, you know, that big elephant in the room, which is that centre defensive midfield spot and the centre back. So I think the City plays, you know, Sterling, uh, Sane coming back in as well, will all be chomping at the bit, ready to go. Uh, and I expect City to put a few past Arsenal in all fairness. Um, if I was looking at first goal score odds, yeah, as you said, well, I think uh, Aguero or Jesus, 4-7 or 8-11, to really good odds I'd probably go with Aguero uh, even though I've got Jesus in my fantasy team which uh, <laughs> be contradicting myself uh, but I think Aguero is that man for the big occasion um, and yeah I just can't see past him in this game as first goal scorer Al the, the big question is motivation though isn't it Manchester City look they're going to finish second you'd imagine or second or third they're going to be in the Champions mm. League places whether they play in the Champions League next season we have to wait out till August of to course. find that one out don't we but yeah uh, you know, Arsenal still trying to get a European place um, outside for the Champions League, aren't they? But a, a Europa League spot, you, you do then question, you know, the, the the motivation behind the likes of Aguero and big players and players that may be leaving at the end of the season. David Silva, what have they got to play for? Yeah, I know you're, you're right. But I think maybe that break would sort of energise you a little bit to think that, you know, how much you've missed it, um, regardless of your individual circumstances. We know that David Silva's not going to be there. Um, and even some of the Arsenal players you can talk about you can talk about any of the guys actually Obama mm. Yang will be a threat for sure but defensively Arsenal have just been calamitous at best sometimes but the motivation side of things really should look after itself and Pep Guardiola let's take the Man City thing then Pep Guardiola is not going to play or not going to let anybody just you know play just because yeah we know we're going to be second but there's a little bit more next year your contract's your personal pride, your professionalism, et cetera, et cetera. That's what's really got to kick in and have a little bit of consciousness that you're going to give your best for your football club. After all, that's what you, that's when you signed the contract for. That's what you agreed to do. So um, it'll be more down to me, uh, mistakes and, and, and quality of player um, that will probably decide the games rather than like a bad attitude, to be honest. Mm. Alan, interesting to see that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has said he's got a very difficult decision to make on, on staying at Arsenal or leaving. Do you, do you think he'll be at the Emirates next season, 30 years old? Well, if he's not, it'll save me 50 quid at the start of the season every year because I've bet him to be the top goal scorer since he came here because I just thought was, he always gets goals wherever he is. He was brilliant at Dortmund and to be fair, he scored a lot of goals. Um, I think that Arteta is going to have to make sure he says, look, we're buying two centre-halves. That's it. Or we're buying players at the back that can sniff out a bit more danger than what's happening at the moment. And I'd be, <clears throat> if I was Arteta, my biggest worry is who I play at the back against Man City. Because Man City will have loads of chances. And if they turn off at all, I, I wouldn't be surprised seriously, if City scored three or four goals against Arsenal. But you're right, Obama Yang's got a big decision to make. And I've gone round the house as well and I haven't answered your question. And you said, will he be there at the end of the season? And I'm going to say yes because I think there will be investment in the Arsenal team because they have to. 
Mm. And, and James, we've, we've mentioned Timo Werner so much, haven't we, in this, this Chelsea move, because he was potentially interested in going to, to Anfield, and we know how Klopp rates him as well. But whether, whether, whether you look at it like Liverpool have missed out on him or, or Werner's chose otherwise, whatever, w- would Klopp then have a pop at someone like Aubameyang? Yeah, definitely. I think he would add a, you know, a further dimension to the Liverpool side. The the only sort of question mark with Firmino, and I know it's a, it's sort of a 50 50 debate, is whether he scores enough goals. You know, you've got Mane and Salah who chip in, you know, a tremendous amount of goals, and for a team that are going to win the Premier League and won the Champions League last year, it seems a bit of a a silly thing to say. Did he score enough goals in from that central striker? But I think Aubameyang definitely would add more of a goal threat to them in the the games where they need to go out and you know put four or five past the team. I think Firmino is better suited in the the Champions League games, for example, where they need to soak up a little bit of pressure against the bigger team. So yeah, I see Aubameyang, given he's slightly older, as a, a similar kind of player to Timo Werner in the sense that he can play down the middle. He's lightning quick. He knows where the goal is, but he can also come in off the left as well, which mm. you know he's done for Arsenal at times this season. So I think definitely, yeah, if, if the option was there, and I think you know, been 30 years old now, if he was to leave Arsenal, it'd be for the short term rather than the long term. But, you know, you can look at that, bringing him in and getting someone in, a younger player for the long term to learn off him, you know, would be a benefit for them. So definitely, I think Klopp would be, you know, looking at him. He had him at Dortmund, you know, he's fantastic for Klopp at Dortmund as well. So a reunion would be there to be had there. And yeah, I think he would add an extra dimension to that Liverpool attack, which, you know, has been a slight question mark over it in in the last few years. And just finally, before we get a prediction on this game from both of you guys, uh, Alan, a word on, on Leroy Sane. Uh, Bayern Munich saying that they, they're going to ramp up efforts again to, to get him. Um, is he going to be at City next season? Interesting to see he's, he's 9-2 to two first goal scorer. He's back in training, of course, 6-4 to four any time. We don't know whether mm. he'll play or not, but is he going to be wearing the, the red of Bayern Munich next summer? No, yeah, summer. Yeah, I th- yeah, I think he will be. Will, um, he's a wonderful... I mean, I can remember when he came here, nobody, well, nobody really knew about him at all. Um, and he had, I think he struggled in the beginning and then the penny dropped and all of a sudden the Man City fans were like, this boy's fantastic. He had a really bad injury. Um, but I think he's, he's gone through a, a spell at Manchester City where he didn't look particularly happy. And I think he'll know that this is an opportunity for him, A, to play with one of the biggest teams in the world. Not that Man City aren't, but they're certainly going to be for the next few years, aren't they? But to go to Bayern Munich and have the opportunity to go home almost then I think it might be too big. And Bayern want the player. I don't know whether you can say that Man City absolutely definitely want to keep Sané, but Bayern want Leroy. And that's why I think he will be in the red of Bayern Munich next year. Uh, go on then, quick prediction, James. City, Arsenal? Well, as I said, I think City are going to have far too much for Arsenal. I wouldn't be surprised if both teams score in this. I think we've seen in the Bundesliga, the defending has been a little bit, and especially in the first few weeks, a little bit shoddy as teams are getting back up to scratch. So, I'd go both teams to score, but I think City will have a far too much for them. I'm going to go. I'm going to go four-one City. Four-one, Alan. What are you thinking? Three-nil City. I don't even think Arsenal will score. Um, I'd, I want to make a case, and when he said both teams to score, I was like, "Can I've got, can I see Arsenal scoring? Can I see Arsenal getting past Man City in the back?" I'm like, "No, nah, I can't." Three-nil. Depends who plays at the back for City, doesn't it? If it's John Stones and uh, exactly. <laughs> Otamendi, exactly. they might have a shot. Exactly. Um, right, boys, to finish, I want to talk about uh, Villa Sheffield United just quickly. Uh, I want a yes and a no answer and a, and a little reason why. Um, start with you, uh, James. Will Jack Grealish join Manchester United this summer? Four to six to make that move to Old Trafford. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think he will. I think, especially if Villa go down, he'll leave. United looked to have missed out on Havertz and we talked about United needing an extra focal point in that forward area and I think Grealish would be perfect for that. So, yeah, I'm going to go with yes, Grealish does join United. Mm-hmm. Alan? Uh, short and sweet then, I'll be gutted. Uh, I think James is absolutely right. It will depend if Villa stay in the Premier League. Um, but I'll need to go. 46 It tells me somebody knows something, so I'll say yes, he goes to Manchester United. Do you, do you say it depends whether he stays in the Premier League? Even if Villa stay up, you don't think he'd go to, to United? Um, I think it would be, I think, I think Villa would try and, you know, give him more responsibility, maybe even look to give him a five year contract. Not that contracts mean an awful lot of this is an insurance policy, to be honest, to get money for your football player. Um, I don't know whether these times come, Jack. I'd like him to stay. He'd be fabulous at Villa in the Premier League next year. But I do think he has. 
ambitions, and it's hard not to go against this. So I can see him going, yeah, for sure. And like I said, 46 means something. not that somebody knows something, but, uh, you know, bookies are not normally wrong. Mm. Uh, on the flip side, then, when you look at these two teams who've come up from the championships uh, last season, uh, contrast, isn't it? And when you look at the job that Chrissy Wilde has done in Sheffield United, really? incredible. Will they finish, James, in the top six? They're only uh, outside of the top six on goal difference. Wolves, 43 points. They've got the, uh, the better goal difference by two. 11 to four to do so, Sheffield United. Ooh. I think they'll just miss out. I think they've had a fantastic season. Don't get me wrong. I think... Wolves, United, Chelsea, we've touched on in terms of squad quality, a little bit better um, than Sheffield United. So I think they'll just miss out, but I wouldn't be surprised if they stay in that seventh spot and hold off the challenge of Tottenham and Arsenal <laughs> below them. Yeah, and, and uh, Al, I mean, seventh and eighth could be Europa League, couldn't it? Depending what happens to Manchester City, obviously with, with the hearing and, and obviously Correct. the FA Cup as well. But eighth place potentially mm. could be Europa League. So it wouldn't really matter, wouldn't it, if they weren't top six? But are you having Sheffield United in your top six? No, no, I'm not. Um, I think it's the worst thing that happened, this virus that uh, caused all the, the break in the, the situation that we're in at the moment. Um, I don't see it with, with, with Harry Kane coming back. So Spurs are just behind them by two points and Harry Kane's coming back to Tottenham. Tottenham might even finish you know, above Wolves, depending on the way the game goes, because I, I think he's fantastic. I really do. Kane, and, and I can't see Spurs finishing in eighth place. Um, the, listen, I, I, it's a great place to go, Bramall Lane. The job Chrissy Wilder done is, is brilliant. And they have an enthusiasm at that football club that is a reflection on their, their league position. It's just been brilliant. But like I said, I think this break has probably hurt them more than anybody else, genuinely, for the simple reason that that momentum they had um, might just have disappeared and I don't see them. Listen, they can still finish eight. They can still maybe manage to squeak it. But you've got Arsenal and Tottenham breathing down your necks. I, I, I can't see it, Will. Yeah. Okay. Villa staying up seven to four. Yes or no, James? I'd like them to because Alan said Preston will get in the playoffs. Uh, I'd, like <laughs> echo, I'd like to echo that for, for his side. I think what Aston Villa have going against them is the fact that Wesley got injured. I just don't think in the forward areas, apart from Grealish, they're scoring off goals. So I think for that reason, they'll just go down. I'd love them to stay up. Fantastic team. I've got a few mates who are involved with them down there as well. Uh, but I think they'll just finish a little bit shy. Okay, so no from James. I think we know what the answer is going to be from the other man. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying yes. I'm saying uh, they get the finger out, they get together and they properly roll their sleeves up and get out of this mess they're in. Uh, next England manager, Chrissy Wilder, 20 to 1, James, to, to wow. succeed Gareth Southgate. Mm. From a Sheffield United point of view, love him to stay at Sheffield United. Uh, boy, old <clears> man, uh, you know, done fantastic with that club. Would he step up to, to be England manager? I think he could potentially. Mm. I think what he has going at Sheffield United is not the, the squad in terms of quality, but all the players are playing for him. Would he get that at England? I don't think so. Um, I think he deserves a shot at it, definitely. But I'd rather him stay at Sheffield United. So I'd say no for him being the next England manager. Al, what do you reckon? Because the names in the past that we've mentioned, people like Eddie Howe, they've, they've tailed off, haven't they, with the, with the club form? I mean, he's, he's yeah. hot property, isn't he, Wilder? Absolutely he is, um, and should be given some kind of opportunity if he really wants the job. Um, I don't know whether, would Chris Wilder want to be the England manager? You know, he's in a position right now. I suppose it's, a, again, an ambition for a manager to get to the top of the tree, so maybe it's a should-be question. I've just asked myself, actually. <laughs> but but in, 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 in that case, then, I need to throw Sean Dice into the mix. What Dice has done at Burnley is just absolutely fantastic. Um, and there'll be a few others on the list, but did you say 50s? He's 20 to 1, Chris Wilder, the next England manager. No, I'm going to go no. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's interesting when you ask that question, though, Al, isn't it? You, you ask a guy who was at Northampton and, and Oxford mm. United not that long ago, would he want to be the next England manager? It was would have been <laughs> yeah. unthinkable, wouldn't it? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely um, yeah. Right, final one I've got on my list. I haven't got any odds. I don't know if you have, James, but would Alan McAnally get in this current Aston Villa team? I uh, can't find him on Paddy Power. Uh, I've been scouring <laughs> after that earlier. Um, but, Do you know yeah. why it's not on? Do you know why it's not on? Because the answer is absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you, you, we, we, we joke and we laugh, but I mean, you, you, your numbers were pretty... Pre I know it was just pre-prem, wasn't it? But what were you, something yeah. like you know, 20 and 60 or something, that numbers like that? Yeah, it was it was all right, and we were obviously it was I had one particularly great season, and then obviously I kind of jumped ship and went to Bayern. But 
Um, I, I suppose that the, the reason I'm saying yes is that they, they're struggling a little bit in front of goal just now, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and uh, they need to come up with some solution that's going to get them out of this position. But um, me being me, Will, and the two of you know me, I would say I would get into any Premier Division team, never mind Aston Villa's team. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, right, just to finish then, quick, quick prediction for, for Villa Sheffield United, James. I think Sheffield United will have a little bit too much for Villa. I think Ooh. the way they play, with or without fans, is, is you know, I don't think it'll change. Uh, you know, Chris Wilder, we've sang his praises there. I think he'll know that squad, how he wants to play. They've had a settled 11 all season. Granted, they've changed one or two here and there. But I think they'll probably have a little bit too much. And uh, looking how fresh-faced Alan is at the moment, he's uh, he's rolled back the years. So, he, uh, he potentially could get into that Villa side. <laughs> yeah. Go on, Alan. Score to finish. Uh, 2-1, both teams to score. Villa just to hopefully get it right on the night almost. Um, everybody knows I'm a big fan of Sheffield United, but when it comes to my ass and Villa, I'm going to have to go Villa 2-1. It'll be tight, they'll be nervous, but they'll just fall over the line and get themselves at the bottom three. All right, boys, good to see you. Right, we'll see you later in the week as we build up to an exciting weekend of Premier League and Championship action. Bye for now.